what's up everyone if you don't know me my name is denzel mensa i'm an enfj 911 social sexual i'm also a life personal development and relationship coach certified and today we are going to be talking about how it's not really as easy as you might think to be able to tell the difference between an extrovert and an introvert so let's get it So, like I said, I'm an ENFJ, which means that E indicates that I'm an extroverted personality type. So obviously this means that I prefer dogs, I prefer to get really around a whole bunch of lots of people, and I'm very annoying, and I'm super, super go-getter, I'm never shy, and pretty much ultimately I'm just a nuisance and blah, 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 whatever other extroverted types of stereotypes are out there, you know? and. To be honest, as you could probably already tell, that's not really the case. <laughs> there are far too many introverted stereotypes that are false, and there are far too many extroverted stereotypes that are false. And these stereotypes have allowed people to be able to type people improperly a lot of times. Now, I've most seen this um, when I started doing my profiling sessions. There were people who even I thought from the beginning, like, oh, this person must be an extrovert and then they turn out to be an introvert and the opposite, believe it or not, where it's like, oh, this person has to be an introvert. And I'm like, oh, wow, this person's actually an extrovert. And it's not because the introvert all of a sudden started talking so much that I ended up realizing like, oh, wow, this person's actually an extrovert or that the, you know, extrovert, like all of a sudden like quieted down. I'm like, oh, they're, they're an introvert. But I think the biggest thing is knowing first and foremost, what function does the person lead with? A lot of us focus a lot on behavior rather than like the function stacking. And at the end of the day, what we really need to focus on is again, what function is the person really leading with, which also means that it's going to point out what function is the post the person most uncertain with. And I like the word uncertain rather than like weak at because our inferior function, um, according to personality hacker and you know, also from what I've noticed, it's more to do with our uncertainty. Like the lower that the functions go, then the more uncertain that we start to feel about them at times. So it's like our hero function or our dominant function is the water that we live in, that we swim in and all of that. And like, it's so easy, it's accessible. And then our auxiliary function is like, yeah, no, if, we're, if we haven't developed it, if we're just like, you know, kind of like at the average level with it, it's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm actually pretty good with this. Um, but it's like a modesty or a humility behind it. This is even going from BB's eight function model, you know, the parent um, function being the auxiliary where we use it to, in service of others. And the tertiary function sometimes, like we kind of like want like some pats on the head for it, um, theoretically speaking. Um, and then the inferior function is where we have the most uncertainty, where it's like, okay, like, am I doing this right? Or as Antonia might say, like, it's that feeling of like when you've driven miles already and then you're like, shoot, did I leave the iron on? It's like, okay, well, either you're gonna continue to always like sit with that uncertainty or you're gonna turn all the way back around and try to actually, you know, turn off that iron at the house, which most people will probably not do. It's just like, you're just gonna have to sit with that uncertainty of like, did I do that right? Did, did, I, did I turn off the iron? Did I, did I leave the iron on? Kind of thing. That is usually how we'll feel about our inferior function. So, a lot of times people can get very well rounded with their dominant and their auxiliary function. At least that's what I've seen in profiling sessions where it's like our dominant and auxiliary function. It could almost look hard to tell apart like, dang, which one is the lead function? Because somebody could be so developed that they are using both the dominant and auxiliary very, very seamlessly and very, very smoothly. And then gauging just how outgoing or how recluse they are is not gonna be enough of a tell to be able to actually understand like, oh, this person's an extrovert versus this person's an introvert. And again, that's a lot of behavior. So one of the best ways to be able to really tell that apart is by going to the tertiary and the inferior function. Like, what are they more certain with and what are they least certain about? You know, what do they jump to even more easily? Like, are they jumping more to a function that you know is an extroverted function like their extroverted function are they jumping more into that one 
then that might be like indicative of an extroverted function if that's the tertiary or are they jumping more to an introverted one and using that a lot more which if that's the case and that might be their tertiary introverted function in that case i for example know a lot of infps actually who talk quite a lot you know and i know a lot of enfps who don't really come off as talkative I also know a lot of ENFPs that talk quite a lot, and I know a lot of INFPs that are also not really as talkative. I know an ISFP who, even though he's really calm, really gentle, and all of that, he does not like to be by himself. <laughs> he's always in the mix. He's always trying to find somebody to talk to and engage with in some way. But he's very much an FI dom over SE dominant. Um, I know an ESFP who's actually pretty recluse, He's not really trying to always hang out with people all the time in that sense, but he still leads with the SC because his FI is not really one that like always led him, but instead what he does where, where he puts his SC is like he's always out in nature. He's always like, you know, even though he's by himself, he's always like seeking like the next, even if it's not like an adrenaline type of thing, like he's seeking the next like experience of some sort. And the TE is definitely higher than his NI. You know what I'm saying? And so from there, you can identify, okay, this person might not be the most outgoing or talkative person, but this person is still an ESFP. Um, I know an INFJ who literally said that she does not uh, really ever need alone time, um, which I know a lot of the INFJs is like, no way, there's no way. But trust me, person is a definitely an NI dominant, definitely SE inferior function. Um, but due to certain life circumstances, like, you know, they actually really love to be with people. They're an Enneagram nine. So they always like to like, you know, be at least with one person, even if they're by themselves, they're doing everything like on the internet. Like, yeah. So it's like, okay. And then I know an ENFJ who actually loves spending a lot of time by himself. Oh yeah, that's me. I don't recharge from other people. That's not to say that every ENFJ would say the same thing but just speaking for myself i know that that whole stereotype of like oh extroverts recharge by or regain their energy by being around people that's not really the case for me if anything for me my energy is always depleting when i'm with people no matter how riveting of a conversation it is no matter how exhilarating no matter how connective no matter how intimate my energy is still going down it might be going down slowly. In fact, the more ener the more fun I'm having, then the slower that energy might go down, but it's still trickling down. Whereas there are introverts who actually get their energy from being with people. They get stimulated. You know, like I know a few INFPs, they're like, once they're with people, then it's like they light up and then they're like, man, I just want to keep on going. You know, and they it's the NE for them a lot of times. But there's also just like some INFPs that probably wouldn't relate to that. So it's Again, like it's a lot harder to be able to tell this apart. I know an INTJ who's incredibly talkative. <laughs> In fact, this INTJ, if anybody were to meet her, she would actually come off more of as like an ENFP or an ENTP, um, and or at least an ENTJ. And then I know ENTJs that are really, really, really quiet, really, really recluse, but their focus, even though they're not really engaging with like a lot of people and stuff like that, and even though they say few words and they're not trying to like be this mastermind over all these people, their focus still is on the external world where they're making a lot of things happen. Um, and they're fast to get into that action, you know, which is the TE dominant in them. So again, it's, it's very interesting to see how this might be. Um, I profiled my uh, cousin Linford. And if you guys had saw that, um, I don't want to spoil it for you. But you'd be surprised potentially what his personality type is from seeing what he says and how he talks and all of that. So it's so interesting. And this is why, once again, we have to like figure out like what is the dominant function? What is the inferior function? And find out all the different ways that they can show up and all the different ways that that personality type can show up. So going back to my energy depletion thing, for me, once again, my energy slowly depletes when I am uh, around people, when I'm talking to people, stuff like that. Um, but it quickly recharges when I'm by myself. So there are even times where, several times, where I will excuse myself to the bathroom or something like that. 
And I was even making jokes with my friend just a couple of weeks ago where we pretty much found out that we do the same thing. Where it's like sometimes I'm literally just standing in the bathroom and I'm just like. And I'm just I'm just chilling, you know, and I'm just kind of like regathering, centering myself and then I'll step back out to wherever the people are. Sometimes I might flush the toilet or run some water just because, you know, I guess I'd rather people think that, oh, that's what he was doing in the bathroom than for them to assume, like, yeah, what the heck? You just you just went and stood there like what, what, what was going on? I'm not saying that every ENFJ does this, but again, that because just because I do it does not automatically mean that I'm an INFJ. Um, my battery recharges a lot more quickly, but it doesn't recharge while I'm with other people. It still depletes while I'm with other people. But I know an INTJ who, when she's with other people, her battery also depletes. However, not only does it deplete very quickly, like boom, 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 but it takes her like literally weeks to be able to recharge just after like a day or two with people. For me, that doesn't, that's not really the case. And I'm, I know a lot of other introverts, even other INTJs, that that's also not necessarily the case. They may not recharge as quickly as I do, but they still recharge faster than that other INTJ. So all of these factors play a lot of different parts to you know, extroversion and introversion. And we can't just focus on the stereotypes of like, oh, this person's more loud and annoying and outgoing and this person loves cats and is introspective and is so deep and you know one-on-one -on -one conversations oh that's one of the most annoying ones oh yeah i like i like one-on-one -on -one, so i'm not an infj denzel I'm, I'm i'm not an enfj denzel i'm definitely an infj no brother that's not that's not how that works <laughs> this is something that's been in my mind recently um and especially as i do more profiling sessions especially as i continue to analyze myself and analyze other people even of the same type and seeing how differently like we can all show up how we all are using the same functions like me and other ENFJs but yet still or even other INFJs but yet still it's like wow that INFJ seems either just as extroverted as I am or even more extroverted than I am and yet you know they're still are an INFJ they still lead with that NI dominant function there are ENFJs who are more still and more quiet, more reserved, whatever it might look like. But then it's like, okay, you can still tell that they actually still lead with that FE dominant function. Um, and so I think that this goes with like a lot of different types and people should be more careful whether they're typing celebrities or whether they're typing, you know, people that they know, whether they're typing, you know, characters, like to really pay attention, like what function is in the lead and if you can't even tell that apart, then look at what function must be inferior. Like if you're looking at an INFP, you know, a lot of INFPs, believe it or not, they can be very talkative. You know, they can be very talkative. I know an INFP who I used to just push a few buttons and that INFP would talk for literally, literally like about two to three hours straight with me only saying a few things, like just a quick question and just spark the NE going again like that. I'm not saying it in an annoyed way. I'm just saying it is like a lot of people might be like, no, but she's an introvert. It's like, yeah, but no, they can talk. And the INFP even knows that about herself, you know, but at the end of the day, that INFP definitely still leads with FI. You know, she's way more into her introverted feeling function and her extroverted intuition function was what she had to develop more of to be able to get out there, to be able to explore different types of theories. Her SI is definitely way more prominent than her TE. So it shows me that, okay, no, you're still an INFP despite like how, you know, talkative that you might be in that way because you feel more certainty with your SI. You have more access to your SI than your, the certainty level that you have with your extroverted thinking function. Whereas if you were an ENFP, you would have more certainty with your extroverted thinking function than you would with your SI and so forth. So if you get stuck with such things, remember to always look at that tertiary and inferior function. That's really going to help you because even though the top two functions can become like very like closely tied together and almost like equally developed, it might appear those last two functions, it'll never really be that way. Like there's always going to be like a very clear difference or distinction between those two. So all of that being said, what do you think? What are some ways that you've been able to uh, break certain stereotypes of, oh, shoot, 
I always thought this person was an introvert, but they're actually an extrovert. Or I always thought this person was an extrovert, but they're actually an introvert. Bonus points for that last one, because there's a lot of extroverts who claim to be introverts, and it's just like, wow. But I love seeing the introverts who actually find out that they're actually extroverts kind of thing, and it's like people are like surprised by that, because... You know, it's just, it's just be, be honest with yourself, you know? <laughs> like, I know it's a cool thing now to, like, identify as an introvert and whatnot, which is so funny because years ago, like, it used to kind of be the opposite. But, yeah, like, what ways have you been able to identify, like, oh, this person's actually, you know, an extrovert, this person's actually an introvert, even though I thought opposite to that beforehand? Um, I'd love to see that in the comments. Um, and also, if you would like help on being able to identify not only if you're an extrovert or an introvert, but also to make certain of what personality type that you are in general. I offer profiling sessions. Um, so if you go over to denzelmensa.com, you can book a session with me. I would be more than happy to be able to sit down with you and actually go into a deep dive session with you that's about 90 minutes or more, um, where we really get into the details of what personality type that you might be. Um, and I explain it to you in detail. And then if you want coaching afterwards, then we can go ahead and do that as well. You can book the coaching sessions also at denzelmensa.com and I can help you become the best version of yourself and better understand yourself, which will ultimately help you better understand other people and relate to other people. So without further ado, thanks for watching. I'm looking forward to hearing y'all's comments and do not forget you matter. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. And if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe. It actually really helps out my channel a lot so that more people who actually care about what I want to say can actually find me a lot more easier. Also, if you did enjoy it, then maybe you'll enjoy a lot of my other content as well. So be sure to check out some of my playlists where you'll be able to find a lot of my older videos and older content. And last but not least, if you would like any profiling sessions or coaching sessions, be sure to check out denzelmensa.com where you'll be able to book me and you'll see the rest of my services. But thanks again and have a great day.